Now the size is interesting, the scale is, is crucial as well as the context. I mean, sculpture it's all about how you encounter it, you know, what eye level it's on. I'm very particular about my plinths, the heights, if possible, the room. And I, had a, I did have a revelation a few years ago, I uh, saw a play and it struck me at the end of the play when they all stand still, that it was pure sculpture. It was lit, you've got the background, the floor. You know, and people use the theatricality as a, as a, sometimes as a bad word, but to me it's, it's fascinating because it's a kind of heightened reality. And you can get that sort of heightened reality in something smaller, you know, you empathise. When they're bigger, I tend to go 15 or 20% bigger than life size. Um, and then it becomes a more of a, you become more of a child in relationship to that sort of semi-heroic, bigger thing. I was offered the opportunity to uh, place a, a piece on the North Yorkshire Moors in the National Park and um, I uh, was able to come up with a, a complete concept so I this, chose this figure, the way he's sitting. But I'm also I'm thinking about the heather, uh, the blacks and the greens of the moorland, um, some of the purples, just so that he he's a subdued presence. You know, I, d I don't want it to stand out, I'd almost like it to do the opposite, to sort of hide itself and people can go and find him. Well, the eyes are, the eyes on any figure are crucial. I mean, how you, how you, and so, and that's a play with my kind of work. It's a play of light and shadow. And in fact, there's this peculiar space you get into when you paint sculpture, which is you can uh, make the shadows darker or lighter, or you can go with one color and let the modeling kind of read more truthfully. Um, but I think, through plays of light and wax and paint, you, you can make the eyes do very different things. One of the things I haven't uh, done for a long time is sculpt children, and I realised there was this point where our kids sit around the table that seemed to lend itself to an idea of a sculpture. This is a bronze sculpture that I've deliberately painted to, to look like the piece did when it was still in, in wet clay. And I think this has that sense of both the children being linked uh, as siblings, there's that connection that they'll always have with each other, and also that sense of them growing and changing. There's a kind of fixedness to the painted sculptures, which while it might it could be very appropriate for a particular subject matter, I think for them, somehow it's more mysterious in this, uh, the way we've got it here at the gallery. Alongside my other work, I have um, found myself being drawn back to two or three of the people that I've sculpted. You know, one of the things it's intriguing about this particular guy is how different he is each time I encounter him. So I've sculpted him two, three, four, five times and I still feel I'm just getting to know what he's like. And I think as he changes, uh, it's, it's something I feel I could work on for another 10 years. You know, it, it's very mysterious. And it kind of gets to the core of trying to capture a human life. There's something very elusive about it and about him. And I think, you know, a lot of people hide their emotions and actually don't give away very much and uh, working with whether it was the homeless guy that I sculpted uh, or this guy who's an actor, uh, there's a sense of their emotions are expressed through their bodies in, in a quite a revealing way. No, I try and find people who've got a sort of, um, a sort of rich internal life, if that doesn't sound too pointed, because I'm trying to get a recognisable human presence. Uh, that, that, that still has some element of mystery to it. I mean, a good example is the concept of the unknown soldier. We, we know he's a soldier, he might have done something, he might have been through something, but we don't know actually who he is. So I'm aware in that in the, the, my, my figures, while being every day, there's a sort of heroicism to them. You know, they're enduring, um, and they're, you know, it's, it's a universal thing that I'm trying to capture. It's just something I've always done. I, I think it's a way of ex expressing myself. Clay is fascinating. I mean, I do, obviously I model all the figures in clay. They go through many different stages until I either abandon them or I think they're kind of finished. And then I'll come back and I'll paint them. And that alone, it's a whole other, so I'm, sometimes I'll make two or three versions of the same piece and, and paint them in slightly different ways, trying to kind of get to the truth of it. So, with the, 
These new works, I am trying with the paint to get close to how the figures felt when they were clay. And actually that is requiring more painting than I anticipated. And I think there's uh, shifts of tone and lightness and darkness within one colour range seems to be leading me towards a, a solution that I hope will have some of that feeling of, of, of the wet clay. They're going to have wax over the top once the paint's dried, I'll put wax on. And then you have a choice of whether you leave that matte or you buff up certain areas. And it's really just to kind of um, create an impression of the colour being in the material rather than on it. Despite the fact they're all based on real people, I'm a little coy about telling anybody who they are. And there's space there for the viewer to, to engage or not engage with the, the sculpture. I I chose to make figures right, right from the outset, but I, I sort of feel the, the figurative element is it, it, it's a huge subject matter. I mean, it'll, it'll occupy me to my dying day, I'm sure. The thing about Folly, he, he, he was based, based on a very specific individual. So the, the jacket, the fact that his shirt is caught slightly under his jacket, these details are very important. You know, he, you can just tell by looking at him that he's not thinking about his clothes or how he's standing. He's kind of locked up in a particular moment in time. I suppose if there's a sort of line that you could take through the people that I've chosen to sculpt, there might there's that sense of their presence. I'm kind of aware of their presence. There's something that they exude that I feel I'm almost stealing. And I can't really quantify it, but I know what it is when I come across it. When he's out on the moors, it'll, it'll almost be, uh, he'll almost be decorative. You know, people will probably think that somebody sitting up there, if they're interested, they'll go a bit closer. And I think only when they're 20, 30 yards away, they'll start to think, actually, this is quite big. And then if you add in the weather, the mist, the sun, daytime, nighttime, you know, the lovely thing about putting work outside is it has a, a life of its own that goes way, way beyond anything that I'm, I'm doing now. I'm not that keen to have explanatory panels on the wall next to my sculptures. I mean, the sculptures, I mean, the funny thing about them being anonymous is that in a given enough time, we'll all be anonymous. You know, it will not be known who they are if they last that long. And so that uh, gives me a kind of freedom. Um, so, you know, in a way, I c if I tried to explain that this happened and this happened and this happened and that's why the piece is here, it, I'm not sure it, it helps. <laughs> you know, I think I want the work to go out into the world and, and, and either fail to connect or connect uh, with people on its own on its own terms. <laughs>